Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you uh, have the room full. Thank you for coming. Um, today or yesterday um, is a special day because we have this vanity metric, you know, 500,000 downloads for all symphony components. So that's a huge number. We are very happy to share that with you in at DrupalCon. Um, let's proceed. It's the symphony track, so we're talking about symphony things in Drupal. <laughs> okay, um, let's go. It's a bit uh, noisy, but it's okay. Um, today we're going to okay, talk about uh, symphony inside Drupal, because as you know, Drupal 8 has symphony, many symphony components uh, inside and uses the, uh, them to do so many things and core things. Um, quickly, so my name is Nicolas Grecas. I'm from Paris, uh, half Greek. Uh, you may have wondered with my name. Uh, I'm the currently second contributor on Symfony, so I have a lot of time uh, working at Sensio Labs to also hack and do things on Symfony, so I'm very happy to uh, work there. I also work for Blackfire, and Blackfire is a profiler, so uh, if you want to know how your code behaves in terms of performance, consuming resources, memory, things like that, uh, it's a nice tool for that. And uh, I worked uh, on these slides and on this presentation with uh, Ryan. Ryan Weaver is the Symfony uh, documentation project leader, so really important guy for all newcomers to Symfony and advanced people because he owns, the, I mean, owning, uh, he uh, leads the documentation project, and this is a huge task. Um, that's it for me. Um, okay, so um, we're going to talk a bit about the fundamentals of every framework, uh, not anymore, uh, except Drupal. So now Drupal has uh, the same kind of, uh, you know, life cycle, uh, web request handling, than um, almost all uh, current frameworks. Um, so that's the kind of code you used to write um, with Drupal 7. Uh, so some uh, convention, a uh, naming function um, like you had to do to make it work in Drupal, and that was magic and working fine. Um, so that's not the kind, the kind of things you do anymore. Uh, in Symfony, in Silex, now you have routes, controllers, requests, responses, and a service container. So we are going to talk about all of them in this presentation. Uh, and of course, now it's also a Drupal 8 thing, so all of these concepts apply to uh, Drupal 8. Um, Silex, who knows Silex? Okay, great. Uh, so Silex is a micro framework. Uh, a micro framework is something that works in a single file. So as you can see, this is a single script uh, with a requiring requiring the autoloader, first line, and then uh, we have the Silex application at our disposal, and we can uh, program a route on the controller. So um, this is amazing. <laughs> um, then to run this, um, you may use Nginx or uh, Apache. So who is doing this daily for development, uh, using Apache or Nginx? Okay. Um, so, and who uses uh, that? PHP-S? Okay, so um, it's a developer's best friend, so uh, you just need to know about, let me talk li a little bit about that. So PHP comes with this PHP server embedded, and you start it in the folder where you are at the current moment on the command line, and this just opens a web server that listens on the local host on some port you have to provide it, so 8,000 in this case. And it's really the quick and not that dirty, quick and dirty, quick and development way to, uh, you know, start a, an application. Uh, it looks for the index.php file in the current folder, and that's it. Uh, that's enough to boot a full application, and it works with Drupal, which means that if you're in the Drupal folder, you just start php-s localhost, and you don't have to configure any virtual host, any web server or, you know, other something that can be complicated to configure and to get right. Just start that in the folder where you are and open the, your web browser to this URL and it should work. 
so that's the kind of experience you have with that. So, um, and that's running the script uh, on the Silex application. So in this case, would so be php s localhost uh, 8001. And then it's listening. We open this URL on the browser, and we get the feedback from the application. So it's a really a trainer's also best friend because uh, when we have, I do a few trainings and sometimes when, okay, it's complicated to have everyone on board with the same setup and PHP dash S is really the common way and I use it almost every day to just hack on something and try it quickly. Um, let's see the general workflow uh, of the request response uh, of that framework deal with. Uh, so. Um, the request comes uh, from the browser usually, or some client, web client. Um, then the routing um, maps and reads the URL really to map it to some controller. So the controller is the actual function and the code that should be run for this route that the router uh, matched. And then the controller is responsible for uh, returning a response, so creating a response, and give that back to the browser. So that's typical workflow. And we're going to see this slide a few times again because uh, it's really the core, uh, the hot path of every framework nowadays. Uh, so back to this. This is the root. So Silex comes with a router embedded. And this is the route. So slash hello slash name. So name is a wildcard. We give it just a name. Um, when the URL matches, uh, it, the function should be called So, uh, with a parameter. So the router looks for this uh, bracket name and gives it to uh, the, the, con the controller, really, so this function as an argument. And then uh, the code is run. And that's it. We have our response, our Hello World Silex application. And basically, uh, this is the th kind of things al also that Drupal uh, does internally. Uh, catching the request, getting it, uh, creating a, no a request object, um, dealing with life cycles, so routing with the router, so it's Symfony router, it's not the Silex router, but anyway, um, calling the action, so the controller class, and providing a response, HTML usually, JSON, uh, if you do APIs, things like that. Okay, so um, let's try with Symfony. Um, who knows Drush, everyone? <laughs> okay, of course. Uh, who knows Drupal console? Okay, so it's Drupal 8's way of doing Drush-like uh, comments. Um, in Symfony, we have uh, the kind of same kind of console, and the Drupal console is uh, using the Symfony console component to build the experience and the sub comments things and all of that. And Symfony is doing exactly the same to build the Symfony uh, installer. So the Symfony installer is just some glue, some uh, helper um, to download the code. So the code is on GitHub, and the helper is, this installer is a command line that downloads the code for you, checks that everything is okay in terms of PHP version, extension, uh, things like that. And it really makes the installation process um, easier, even though you don't really need it technically to have a Symfony application working. Uh, so uh, you could use it to create a new project, so Symfony, new, my dear name, so my project, uh, really, and this downloads the Symfony application um, and show you some, you know, nice uh, uh, greeting, uh, welcoming message to onboard uh, people easily. Um, if you look at the downloaded code, you'll see this kind of uh, directory structure. So um, the app folder is where uh, all the configuration and templates and not code related uh, files are. So um, config.yaml, uh, twig files, all of that. Uh, then this other very important folder uh, is the uh, SRC, so the source folder. And this is where you uh, put your classes just following, you know, the PSR4, PSR0 naming convention. So the class uh, app bundle is in the app bundle namespace, and this maps to the directory <coughs> structures. And so we have directory for namespaces and file for the class, uh, the last part of the class name. Um, so this comes empty, of course. 
uh, except maybe with the app bundle, which is the you know the module file in uh, in Symfony. Then you have okay the test folder. It's up to you to fill it, and the var uh, folder where we put uh, cache information, generated files, uh, logs, and things like that. So technical uh, things that are managed by Symfony uh, itself usually. And uh, we have the vendor uh, directory, which is for libraries, third-party code. Uh, you have the same in uh, Drupal 8. So you will find the vendor directory in Drupal 8. And this is uh, created by Composer, which is used to manage dependencies um, in Symfony and in Drupal 8. And in, I guess, most PHP application nowadays who uses Composer. Okay, Drupal console, Symfony console. <laughs> um, when you install the application, there is also the bin folder. And in the bin folder, you have a local script, local PHP script. So this is a PHP script, and it runs uh, from the command line. So you can run the PHP-s server and just using bin console server run. This is just a helper wrapper around you know, PHP-s I was talking about previously. Uh, so you could start php-s uh, with a few common uh, options on the command line and do exactly the same. This is just a helper. Uh, but yet this is really helpful to, you know, you get into this folder, your projects, you start the server, and you work on it. It's ready. Nothing else to configure on APG, Nginx, things like that. And in the same with Drupal console. Uh, with Drupal console, you can say uh, Drupal server. That's the name of the command on Drupal console. And it boots just the php-s server, and you can hack on your uh, Drupal installation and on broken modules and things like that. Everything you need to, to do, really. Um, so that's the welcome page of the Symfony uh, default installation application. Um, so Dries was talking about you know welcoming people uh, with and not that empty application at the beginning. So same for Drupal and next version of Drupal, and not providing only empty pages so that, so that people can um, feel uh, a bit uh, more how it works and what they can do, and that, that at least that it works. So here we are. This is a welcoming page. Um, if you go to something, some other URL, so slash nothing slash 2c slash here, uh, you'll get this kind of... Uh, exception page. This is um, just the page that is displayed when something went wrong, not in terms of Symfony not working, because this is Symfony working uh, on behind, so this is an exception page, and it means that Symfony is working. Uh, but there's no page here, so that the, uh, you know, error page for nothing there. Uh, so, okay, that's basically what this means. Hello, I'm the Pac-Man ghost. Look, uh, things are working. This page does not exist yet. Um, in Symfony um, and in Drupal, also everything is hackable. So you you may you may have to you may find some fancy bundles, and uh, this is one I wanted to share with you. <laughs> so if you want to replace the ghost, <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> so surely code gif exception bundle. It takes a random bundle from a website, a random gif <laughs> from a site, and that's it. <laughs> okay, so. Now we installed Symfony. Uh, let's build the page. Um, so the first thing, one of the first things you can do is um, creating a route to the new page you want to, to add to your application. So to do that, uh, you open the routing YAML file. And uh, in Drupal module, it's called mymodule.routing.yaml. And the content is the same. So the content is this kind of YAML. Who um, uses YAML. Okay. <laughs> so you know how it works. So um, the hello world is the name of the route. Um, path is the URL uh, pattern, you know, because we have the uh, bracket name thing that is not exactly the URL, but the placeholder for it. Uh, and we have defaults, and in defaults, we define this underscore controller and uh, a class name. So the class name is the full, uh, fully qualified class name and the method that should be called whenever this route uh, is hit by, by an HTTP client. Uh, the route has a name, hello world. 
uh, because we use this, uh, we use roots both to match from the browser from the browser to uh, the controller, and we use this also this uh, we use also this uh, configuration to generate URLs. So you can say to the URL generator, give me uh, the full uh, URL for the hello world route with the name uh, Nicholas, and you will get HTTP slash localhost slash my application slash hello slash Nicholas. So uh, that's why routes have names. Um, on the controller side, we have this function, uh, this kind of code. So this is really plain PHP code. As you can see, there's no uh, no much dependencies, so we have just plain class, no extend, no implementation of an interface, and a public function, say hello action for the name, and that's the job of the controller, returning a response, saying in this case, hello name. Um, this class, the response class, is the same that Drupal 8, uh, Drupal 8 uses inside, so you can do exactly the same in your own controller, so returning a new response, and you will take control of the full page if you do that. So if you return, you know, the uh, sharp markup uh, array and the sharp uh, markup with the value with the HTML content, uh, this one in Drupal will be included uh, inside the default layout. So you will have the D Drupal layout and in your block, you will have the output of your controller. But if you return a response, you will take control of the full page from the beginning HTML tag to the end HTML tag, and you can do whatever you do there, even return non -HT not uh, HTML content. So, here we are. It works. <laughs> uh, so, back to this. Um, that's the same, exactly the same workflow lifecycle uh, that we did with Silex, but now we just did it with. Symfony and also Drupal 8 because it's exactly the same. So the request came in, um, routing did its job to map it to the controller. The controller created the response and the response was sent back to the browser. Uh, what about the debugging experience? You know, it's something really uh, important in terms of, you know, uh, doing with dealing with code and having things working every other time is not the case and we are used to you know uh, have things not working yet uh, and to um, we need to be able to reflect the state of the application and to uh, get insights uh, on what happens uh, on how this application is configured so uh, with symphony we have the debug uh, rotor uh, command on the console application, and this displays all the routes that are uh, available for this application, for the current state of the application. So as you can see, the last line there is our hello world route with a slash hello slash name um, path. Um, it matches all uh, the method, so HTTP method, get, post, put, delete, so we could have restriction there. Uh, all schemes, uh, HTTPS or not, and all host because you could have different controllers based on the on the host the uh, local host or so so on and you have also all the underscore profiler routes uh, which are uh, just the routes that are required to make this uh, work so at the bottom of the screen it's the web profiler toolbar um, you have exactly the same it's white and not black okay um, with the devil, uh, devil module in Drupal 8. And so you have to, and you should in fact, uh, if you're not doing it uh, already, so install the devil module and install also the, in, enable it the web profiler module. And this will provide you exactly the same experience, having everything at hand in the bottom of the screen. So as you can see the total uh, generation time, so 87 uh, milliseconds, four and something megabytes, and a few other information. So, for example, uh, it's a bit cut there, but um, we have a 200, which is the response code, HTTP response code, then the controller, so we know that, okay, that's not unexpected, but it's our say hello action on the polite controller. Uh, the controller class, root name, um, do we have a session, yes or not? Um, 
we also have, you know, uh, security tokens, security authentication, authorization, so we can check there uh, who we are for the application, and we can see if did we log in to get this page, is the application uh, knowing us. So in this case, we have a session, and we are some anonymous uh, user uh, browsing the application. Uh, if you click on anything on the toolbar, you'll get this uh, profiler uh, pages, so underscore profiler, if you remember the routes on the previous screen. So um, this will show you for the current request, the one that was just displayed before, um, the render time, the number of template calls, of block calls, um, the details on the render template. So in this case, we have these four uh, twig files that were, you know, loaded past the render. And you can click on the other tab and to get uh, request response details. Performance uh, log, so all the logs can be uh, consulted from this. The event, routing, security, twig. So this is, for example, the view for the profiler um, panel. Um, it's a really uh, an interesting view uh, when you want to understand and to figure out what happened uh, during this uh, page rendering. Uh, because, you know, sometimes it's a bit magic to uh, have a response and you know that Drupal did things, but you don't know what. And in this case, you can just look at this and have a quick overview uh, what happened. So what happened there? At the beginning, there was some section. It's a black section. So it's kernel.request. And in fact, that's an event. Uh, we'll talk about that later. So it's uh, Drupal and Symfony work uh, with events. Uh, so this is the first event that is triggered when a request comes in. There is an event that is dispatched and it's called Canada request. And this does call some listeners. So as you can see in blue, we have several listeners uh, that did something on the request. So we have the debug handlers, the dump listener, the session listener, the fragment listener, the router listener. As you can see, this one did most of the job, looking at the time it took. Um, so that's really the listener um, executing the router, uh, reading the URL, and figuring out um, which method and which class should be executed for this particular route, slash hello, slash name. Then the firewall and the local listener, the listener, the translator. Uh, so security also is hooked on the kernel that request event uh, and so on. So we have the kernel controller and you can, okay, understand and get an overview. Um, that's really helpful not looking at the number because performance uh, this is maybe not the best tool to deal with performance, but just to understand things uh, better. Um, okay, can we do even less work? Just uh, back to our rod uh, and our control definition. Uh, in Symfony, you can, you can use annotation to define routes. So instead of uh, creating this uh, routing.yaml file in Symfony, uh, you can put configuration and code uh, at the same place using this at route uh, annotation and using, okay, the slash, the path, in fact, as first argument of this annotation. And this is configuration, and this is really uh, useful because, you know, you have everything in one place, and you know just by looking at the single file uh, that the uh, say hello action is mapped on the slash hello slash path name uh, URL. Next topic. Services and the container. Um, so, services. Service, um, Drupal 8, Symfony um, have a container, and the container holds services. Services are, you know, useful objects that do things. Uh, so, not all objects in your application uh, are or should be services. Uh, only some of them are services. Uh, so we are talking about a plain PHP object. So you create a new instance of my uh, thing. Uh, so anything. Uh, it could be the URL generator, the routing. It could be Twig. It could be so anything you have in Drupal is a service. Um, and services are objects that do things, which means that they process uh, content, but they do not change state, which means that you can call them twice. Uh, three times, four times, anytime you want, and you will get the same result 
at each time, which is very different from an object that can mutate state. For example, if you have some painter, so an object that paints uh, some drawing, uh, then you can have a set background uh, method on it. And if you use that as a service, it would be a mistake because you could have some first part of your application saying set background red, and then the other part of the application using that ba red background when, the, when they may expect it to be white at the beginning when they start drawing the, um, the painting. So uh, services are objects that only do things. And on the other side, you have uh, data objects, and data object is the opposite of services. Uh, data objects uh, are, um, you know, date time, so things that have almost no method on them, on them but that they just hold some uh, value and collection of values or properties, and they can mutate and they can uh, just hold the state. And by splitting your application in, you know, services uh, on uh, one hand, on data object on the other one, it's a really good design pattern and best practice to have clear and clean uh, code then uh, splitting them. That's it. <coughs> so now the container. So the container is uh, logically some associative array that, hold, that holds uh, the services, uh, which means that uh, services <coughs> are object, actual PHP instances, and we uh, give them just a nickname. So they have an identity, and the identity is this nickname. So logger, in this case, it's a string. Logger is the string, the nickname of the logger object. So at some point, at some bootstrapping step uh, in uh, Drupal 8 or Symfony, uh, we created a new uh, logger. We don't know how, but that's not our business. Uh, so there is a logger, and Drupal knows how to instantiate it. And this object that it created, this new logger, uh, has been stored in the container under the logger, uh, you know, nickname, so key in the array. Oh, okay, so really, now this is not an array, of course, this is just uh, logical, and technically, the container is an object. So uh, the object has a method, which is um, almost the only one yet that you should use, which is get. So container get logger, which means give me the logger, please. Okay, and then you get the logger. Uh, so, in Silex, there is a container, uh, which is not uh, the Symfony dependency injection container, um, but which is called Pimple, which is uh, another project. Uh, then, in Symfony and in Drupal 8, uh, there is the dependency injection component from Symfony that is used. Um, and he, if you have it at hand, uh, you can get any service from it. So. Um, it's, yes, really preloaded with many useful um, features, really. Um, on Symfony, we have uh, Bean Console Debug Container. This uh, shows a map, an array table, really, of all the services that are defined in the application. Uh, in Drupal Console, it's just Drupal Container Debug, and we'll get the same output, or almost the same. Um, in Symfony, we have 220 built-in services, maybe more, it changes a lot. Um, in Drupal, I think you have way more. So, uh, if you want to uh, dig and inspect uh, one specific service, uh, you can um, ask, uh, give it a name, the name of the service you want to uh, get more, more data for and get the details. So in this case, we have, um, we are displaying the uh, service configuration for the Twig service. So the service ID, its nickname is Twig. The uh, class of the object is uh, Twig environment. So that's the actual PHP class of the Twig service. Um, the tags is something we're going to talk about in the next talk in the afternoon. Uh, is it public or not? So can you fetch it by using get or not? Private services can't be uh, fetch it from the container. Uh, synthetic, lazy, shared, abstract, auto wired, and things like that. We'll see that in the uh, dependency injection talk in the afternoon. Um, okay, now we know that there is a container somewhere. Uh, how um, do I get it in my own code? Because I want the features. Um, in Symfony, there is a property on controllers 
And if our polite controller extends from some base controller that is provided by Symfony framework, then you get a property, protected one, so from the parent class, that is called container, and that contains the container. So you can uh, use it to, you know, get twig. And this is also a working example. So in this case, we are making our control better and using twig for rendering uh, HTML around our hello message. So we say, container, give me the twig service. And we know by looking at the twig template class that there is other documentation, really. That there is a render method there. And the first argument is a twig uh, file. So that's the template. And the second argument is the associative array of variables and values that should be you know, used to replace the placeholders in the twig file. And then we return the new response with the HTML we just generated this way. OK? But the same kind of things uh, Drupal does internally when using twig you know, to render things and blocks and things like that. That's the kind of twig file uh, you can use. And um, so my name placeholder replaced with the um, name from the URL. Um, there is no, uh, you know, uh, security issue there, be there because um, Twig auto escapes the content. So whenever there is some, you know, uh, tricky name with HTML content there, this won't be displayed as HTML. It will be just escaped with the proper, uh, you know, um, uh, cross-site scripting uh, for uh, things like that. Not cross-site, uh, exactly. So back to this. Um, we have the request, routing, the controller, and now the controller is really your uh, place to bootstrap and to wire, um, So, which means using all of the services you need to just build this page. So you have the controller. In the controller, you have the container. And the container has all the features that Drupal 8 provides, that Symfony provides. So we just saw that we were using Twig. You can use the URL generator. You can use the container factory in Drupal 8 to fetch, uh, you know, um, default or user configured um, values from the admin, administ administration page on uh, Drupal 8, and use that to just craft your HTML and render the response and get back to the browser. Okay, so the question is, what else does Symfony do, or what else does uh, Drupal 8 do? Um, the answer is not. Uh, the question should be what lives in the Symfony container, what lives in the Drupal 8 container, because this is really where features are. The container some, should be something quite abstract, uh, but yet it has a registry of features, really. So, uh, some examples. Um, the Doctrine ORM, um, we use it a lot in Symfony, so um, we can get the entity manager from the container, it's ready most of the time, so doctrine.orm.entity-manager, and this will provide you the entity manager, and you can get a repository for it, and you know use that repository to fetch your entities, and persist, modify your blog post, and flush to you know save, and update the database there. Um, you can use it also to get the database connection, so container, give me the database connection, and then we're going raw uh, SQL requests with the, the connection. Uh, in Drupal, it's the, the same service is just called database. So it's not database connection, it's just database. And there are a few differences like that, nothing uh, important. Another uh, service, a more complex one, we won't get into the details there. Uh, there is a powerful yet complex uh, form system in Symfony. So uh, it, everything starts with a form factory service, and with this form factory, uh, we create you know fields, email, username, gender, with a choice, male, female. Um, if uh, the form uh, is able to handle the request has been submitted and the data is valid, uh, then we get the data, we save it, we update our entities, so on and so on, and then at the end we can render, um, you know, the uh, tweak template which uh, can display the form and there are some form helpers. So in this case, form start for the you know, HTML form uh, start tag from end and some helpers to render the uh, input tags and the la their labels and all the div arounds and fancy things to generate forms easily. Um, you can also, of course, do everything yourself. So you have the request at hand and you can get the email from the request, get the username from the request, gender, 
and do anything you want with that. Yeah, so with community bundles and with community modules uh, in Drupal 8. So basically a module in uh, Drupal 8, a bundle in Symfony, is just a way to uh, you know, define new services. Uh, so models provide services and also create a few controllers, a few routes. Uh, that's basically what a model is, what a bundle is, you know, services, features, and routes, which means pages, a few pages to uh, uh, add, uh, you know, UX, UI to like the module. Uh, so how do you create now your own services? Because that's what models do, and that's what you uh, um, also should or may have to do at some point. Um, so. Let's uh, do this exercise. So um, let's say we want to create some random uh, greeting uh, feature. So this one should be able to say hello or hey you or hola or ketal or anything else you want. So that th that's the specification. Um, so where should we put this logic, you know, selecting a random uh, greeting uh, sentence? Um, put it in the controller or put it, uh, you know, in some business logic class um, so it can be reused or flat function, but maybe not. Um, let's uh, do it um, in the decoupled way. So um, let's create a class whose responsibility should be just to, you know, randomly greet some name. So here is the class. So we have a list of greetings that it knows about, and then we have a function there, and which uh, uh, returns a string, which is hola. Uh, uh, John, uh, or uh, hello John, or uh, git blame, ha, I knew it was John. Uh, so any greeting really, so, and then the content is, e is easy. A run to get an, a random value there and, you know, concatenate the name with the uh, sentence. Business logic, really. Uh, the way to use that in your controller could be this one. So, in the controller, you instantiate a new greeter, and you get a random greeting from it. You use Twig or the templating service, which is the same, uh, in to generate the HTML. Uh, so that's it, and you get the greeting, and you display the page. Um, next step. Now, uh, let's say we'd like to log uh, which uh, greeting was chosen. So. We displayed it, and we want a log file with all the greetings that were generated over time. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, we have a logger at hand. In Drupal, it's called logger.factory, and on the factory, you have a get method where you specify, and it's your job to tell, I want to log to the database, and there is logger get database, uh, way to get a real logger, something which, uh, on which you can call the info or the log method to you know, put messages in the database in this case. So in Symfony, we just have a logger, and the logger is configured uh, somewhere else. And the logger provides, um, you know, a PSL log logger interface, which is a standard way to uh, log messages in PHP. Uh, not only Drupal, not only Symfony, really. Um, and let's use it. So <coughs> we ask to the container, um, give me the logger, and log this info message. Um, we create the greeting, greeting, okay? So we just use the container uh, in Drupal, uh, in Symfony to, um, you know, get the service and get the feature and log things. Uh, in Drupal 8, um, you don't have a property like that. So in Drupal 8, if you want the container, um, you have several ways. One, and the most low level, if you can, if you can say that, is to uh, implement its container injection interface. So it's a special uh, core interface. So you implement this interface, and implementing it uh, means creating a public uh, static function that is called create. And then uh, this one will be called with the container, so the actual object. And in, uh, so it's a factory, and you can return a new instance of our controller there with everything injected in the constructor. I don't have an example. I can show you later if you want. Um, okay, so 
now our controller is doing uh, logging, but what if we'd like to have a random greeter itself log? Maybe it's not the, the controller business to you know, log things. Maybe we'd like the random greeter to log what it did. So how do you do that? <coughs> so just copy pasting the line we used in the controller. Uh, this is taking the disk container get line and creating uh, you know, um, this info message. Of course, this won't work because um, there's no container. This is a plain PHP class. There is no context, there is no parent, there is no container property. So, of course, it won't work. So the way to do that is to use dependency injection. So, um, we add a constructor on our random greeter, and in the constructor, we uh, require a logger argument, and we store that logger into uh, the property, okay? And that's it, now we know, and it's not our job there in this class to know how to instantiate this, but we know that by contract, by definition of this class, we need a logger. So then, uh, okay, if you want to be a bit more strict, you can add the interface uh, on the construct method so that you are sure that uh, someone no one will provide you with an array or with some you know, request response, any object that is not a logger. So in this case, now we are sure that we have a logger, a real one that we know how to use. And in back in our um, controller, um, we can, no, not back in, in the random greeter, we can just use this logger and info because we have the logger at hand now, we have the property. Uh, and then in the controller now, we can just instantiate our greeter uh, and providing the, you know, symphony logger as a constructor and everything is, you know, wired now and it works, basically. Okay, so this is dependency injection. We just in injected the, the, the logger dependency into the random greeter. Now you can also tell symphony and Drupal 8 uh, to do this job, you know, creating the services, injecting a logger there uh, by providing it with uh, recipes. So uh, this is a recipe for instantiating, uh, let's say, a my random greeter service. So this is uh, in the service YAML file in AppConfig and in Drupal 8, you'll find it in the, uh, you know, uh, mymodule.service.yaml file, which, uh, you know, is the, just the Drupal way to uh, Drupal place to put this uh, configuration. So this configuration uh, creates a new service, uh, my random greeter, and it says to the container builder that um, this is, uh, this object, this service is an instance of the app bundle greeter, greet random greeter class, so that the fully qualified class name of our random greeter, and it takes one argument, which is with the at symbol, uh, which is the logger service that the containers the container knows about already because of previous definition that uh, we loaded and Drupal and Symfony added there. Uh, so that's enough for the container to create and to generate the code uh, to create do by itself the new random greeter and give it the logger as argument. Um, so if we use the console there, we can see that it worked and it gives us a reflection in debug information so our service ID, class, tag, scope, container, that's something that doesn't exist anymore uh, anyway. Um, and this is the way to use it. So in comments, the old way, and now uh, the new way is to call this container get my random greeter, which basically does exactly what the commented lines do, but now it's the container's job to instantiate and do the wiring. And then we have our greeter and we can use it as a feature, you know, as a service to randomly greet someone, <coughs> okay? In the talk in the afternoon, uh, I'll show you uh, many um, ways to, you, you know, um, configure instantiation. So the previous uh, slide, this one, is just a simple one, and there are so many ways to uh, add um, definition recipes for instantiating things, um, so you can learn more. Uh, in the afternoon about that. Okay, now, another topic, um, events. Um, so events is really uh, 
as you saw, it's the first thing that happens in the symphony in Drupal uh, lifecycle. So kernel dot request. There are more events. Uh, it's the hook system really in Drupal eight. So we have events, hooks is the same. Um, so events um, pro uh, provide you a way to say, hey, when this event happened, so kernel dot request, uh, exec exec execute this function, whatever it is. So Let's do one. Um, some events, uh, when the request comes, so we saw that there is a kernel.request event. Then uh, on the kernel.request, we saw that there is a listener there, the routing listener. So this one is doing routing. Then um, we have the kernel.controller event, which is triggered to resolve the controller. Um, then the controller is triggered, which uses containers, the container services. When the controller is done, um, there is the kernel.view event that is triggered. We just will, next slides are about the kernel.view. When the response is ready, uh, we trigger the kernel.response event. And that's it for the main, there are more, but that's the main event. So you have the possibility to hook on each of them um, to do things at the beginning of the request, at the end of the request, at any time uh, you need to. So for example, what if um, the controller didn't return a response? Ah. Uh, let's try. So um, let's return an array. So let's say this array returns a template and variables. So what will happen there? Oh. You will get the, uh, okay. Uh, this is the actual error message you can uh, see. So the controller must return a response, uh, or it fails, uh, you blew it. Um, actually, you can do things uh, with the return value of the controller, and you can hook on the kernel.view event, and you can have a listener that can uh, you know, listen for the return value of the controller and say, okay, I know how to deal with that array, uh, and I'm no, I know how to build a response from it. So. Um, at the bottom of the screen, we have this public static function get subscribed events, and this is uh, what is required by the interface on the top, so the event subscriber interface. So this is the first step to wire an event listener, event subscriber in Drupal 8 and in Symfony. So returning an array which maps, you know, kernel.view and a method there, which means just basically when the kernel.view event is fired, please call the onView method on this very class. Okay, so now, okay, we have the onView event that is not yet wired because we have some definition uh, to tell Drupal 8 and Symfony that this should be registered in the container, but let's continue. Um, so how do we register that? Uh, let's create a listener, give it a name, render array view listener. Um, it's a class of just the class we created and it takes um, a twig, um, the twig service as argument. Why that? Because uh, we know that our array is going to be rendered by twig. So we need twig there to turn the array into an actual response using uh, twig. And what's missing there is this configuration. So by adding a tag, in this case the <coughs> event subscriber tag, you're just basically telling the container um, this is an event subscriber, and you should give it to the event dispatcher service, which is something that already exists in Drupal 8 and in Symfony. Um, and the container uh, at bootstrapping stage will, sell, will tell, okay, um, please uh, give me all the definition that have this tag, and wire them in the event dispatcher, so that the event dispatcher uh, knows about them and can fire the listeners and the subscribers there. Okay, so doing so, um, you can create the onView method. So um, we won't get into the details, but basically this uh, is checking that this is the uh, result from the controller is the array we are needing there. And if yes, we, we get the template, the variables, we, re we create render on the twig service and we return a response there. So basically we just, you know, turned the array into and the HTML response, uh, doing it our way. Okay, let's build something. 
Uh, building something is okay. nice when you have already a skeleton, something that uh, you can uh, look at, and that's what Symfony provides. So we have a Symfony demo um, application, so you can uh, create a demo application using just Symfony demo if you have the installer uh, at hand. So this will download the code and create this kind of directory structure. Uh, so app bundle, you know, with common controllers, data fixture, because there is some uh, model there. It's a blog application. Entities for blog post comments, event listener, we just talked about them. Forms repository for, you know, a uh, set of data, Twig, and some other things. So um, it shows a lot, uh, many features uh, of basic Symfony application, but not that basic uh, at all, really. And this is a kind of uh, view you will get. So um, this is the login page for the backend. And uh, there is a show source code, so you can keep uh, reading the code in the um, demo application. I'm almost done, so um, a few tricks, um, and this may be the most important one. Um, use PHP Storm. Uh, I'm not PHP Storm reseller, uh, yet it's really great. Uh, it provides, if you enable the Symfony plugin, it will provide you with, uh, you know, auto completion, auto discovery for so many things. It knows how services are defined, so it's able to, you know, if you do container, get, and it will provide you an auto completion for the list of existing services. And if you select Twig, it knows by looking at the, you know, all the configuration there, that this Twig service has a render method, so it's so helpful. Uh, you don't have to, you know, browse the code to figure out how it's uh, coded there. Uh, there is this URL, uh, which provides a few introduction, uh, you know, tutorial uh, to uh, have more details on how to use that. Um, okay, so uh, summary, uh, use Salex, I have two summaries. Use Salex uh, to do uh, simple applications, really, it's really easy. Um, use Drupal 8. Uh, use Silex and Drupal 8 and Symfony, all together you can. Um, what did we saw uh, in this talk? So, um, what was all that about? <laughs> so, uh, terms to repeat in your head. Root, controller, response, that's the life cycle. We have services, and services are provided by the container, and we have events and listeners listening for them. That's really the core of, you know, Drupal 8 and Symfony. Um, what Symfony and Drupal 8 share? They share the request and the response objects, which mean also the definition, the class. That's exactly the same code. For root, controller, response, same again. So same router, same response, and the control system is the same. The event listener system is the same. So this is the event dispatcher um, from Symfony. Um, the dependency injection uh, component is used for container, and so the definition of services is the same, really. Um, the list of services, so you can have the console and call debug container or container debug in Drupal. Uh, same thing for roots, so roots or debug. And the web debug toolbar uh, is also a Drupal 8 thing if you enable the devil and the web profile on models, which you should if you're developing and doing things like we just uh, tried to do. Okay, you can use Silex to learn Drupal. You can use uh, Silex to use a tool on Symfony, you can use Symfony tool on Drupal, you can use OK, no. And <laughs> <laughs> finally, we have uh, more tools to solve problems. That's the point. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if we have time for questions. Ah, almost not, if you have a question. Uh, no, they don't need to. In fact, the container is able to, you know, uh, instantiate the container when you need it. Yes, it's lazy loading, yeah. Just use this subset and the container will instantiate this subset only. That's it. That's lazy loading, yeah. Okay, thank you.